Good afternoon, everybody. This is Sivaram Rizal, your teacher here today for for discussing, discussing and interacting the approaches to the study of political science, basically for the first semester master's degree for the top, for the uh, subject modern political theory. Today, I will be basically discussing about about what are the approaches to the study of political science. Before this uh, class, we have already discussed different types of approaches that are used to study the political science. So, my today's part of the concentration and presentation is basically focused on the systems theory approach propounded by David Easton and inside it, we I will be discussing mostly on input-output analysis. So, so, before going to the topic, I, I would like to make my presentation, uh, the schedule of the presentation. First, I will be presenting some introdu introductory part of my presentation. Then, what is the main content? Main content here, uh, uh, what David Easton has talked about, has talked about in input-output analysis, I will be discussing on that. After that, I will discuss some merits and demerits of this uh, theory, uh, of, of these approaches and I will conclude this, uh, most probably I will take some 40 to 45 minutes. So, uh, so to begin this, so I, I would like to take all of you to the point, uh, to the study of the political science. As in our previous class, we have discussed various approaches, approaches to the study of political science. Basically, the approaches that we have discussed, the approaches that we have discussed, traditional approaches, modern approaches, system, systems theory approach, output input analysis, structural functional approach, behavioral approach, post-behavioral approach, and interdisciplinary approach. These are these are the major uh, approaches that we we are dealing to the study of political science, and this is particular input output analysis by David Easton. Whenever we discuss about the study of political science, we we, we I would like to take you to the scene of the scenario uh, right around after the Second World War when the socio economic political and Every structural changes has happened in the realm of political science. So the political science, just like, just like in other academia, other subjects, it has tried to bring some some theory, some methods to apply in political science. And among that, among that, the use of the, the, the method that, that were used in natural sciences were tried to adapt in social sciences as well and most particularly in political science that is what we generally discuss about about behavioral behavioral revolution or behavioral behavioral uh, approach in political science so why i'm talking this today here at this point is that is we are talking about david easton and he was the propounder of behavioral revolution in political science particularly applying the methods of natural sciences study, natural sciences, the, the way natural sciences do research, research, uh, value free, value neutral, or the, 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 the use of the empirical and scientific method of study. So, the application of that, the method in political science was some, some, something important in the area of political science. So, that was why, uh, that was why David Easton was considered as a pioneer to introduce behavioral, behavioralism in political science. But, but again, when, when, uh, when uh, David Easton came to the point in the, in the late 60s that the way behavioral revolution uh, gave in the area of political science was not that much that much calculated or, or that much uh, appreciable ap appreciated that's why he himself became the <coughs> propounder of the post behavioral revolution so why this is important is that today is is i'm talking about the approaches and this is the systems theory what david easton talked has talked about system what system he has mentioned is important here and what is the what what is the input and output analysis how the system functions how the system works is very important for us to understand here so so important point i would like to start is that uh, 
is I, I, I just I mentioned uh, the system theory is an approach in political science which which uh, uh, utilizes three major major aspects, particularly inputs, outputs, and the cycle of feedback, which which uh, which is very important to give uh, to give feedback to the input area. David Easton, yes, he argued. David Easton argued that. Uh, some sort of uh, general theory was needed in politics which can be applied which can be uh, correlated correlated with other uh, discipline as well or which can deal the most uh, the social phenomena social and political phenomena that's th that was what the the scene was it was around the time of 50s and 60s so he has presented david eastern has presented the input output analysis in his article the analysis of the political system so the point here the system i would like to take the system means here the political system i will let's political system how the political system works is something remarkable for us to deal so he uh, in 1957 he has written the article the article uh, the analysis of political political systems in which he has illustrated input output analysis and which was published in uh, world politics basically here in order to define in order to define his uh, analysis he has he has presented two sets of inputs one set of output and the feedback mechanism to the input side this is what about the basic notion of uh, david easton's uh, systems theory that we discuss here so some of the terminologies that are essential that are essential for us to understand the basic part is the input generally we will discuss we will discuss it again later about what what constituents are there inside that input side second is output output this is another another part which is very much important here is feedback feedback this yes these major three aspects are very important for us to deal here uh, while dealing about deep david Eason's input output analysis by the title by the by the nomenclature itself uh, we we can assume that here is input here is output and and it's the analysis so how a political system functions this is very important this is very important in this introductory part so so david Eastern has has categorized two options in this input side they are demand and support demands and supports yes we will discuss much about uh, demand and supply support later and then the output what is output basically output is the delivery delivery by the uh, by the authority or th this this could be uh, policies this could be policies this could be uh, laws this could be regulations or this could be uh, decisions or anything that uh, and the order command that that were made by the authorities and the feedback every policies every decisions or whatever the action that has taken by the authority has to ask two sides that may be positive that may be negative if that if that get Positive feedback, obviously, that would be uh, that would be important point for for the, that political system. But if if uh, negatives or the uh, negative interpretation, negative uh, criticisms were made, then that becomes feedback to the to the input, and the course could be corrected. This is what about the uh, what about the uh, major parts of the uh, introductory part. So this is what. I will, I will draw, I will draw a diagram here right after some time. So, so let's, uh, let's make, let's make a little more illustration on the topic. The illustration, basically what David Easton, let's, let's uh, erase this as well. For any political system, David Eason argued that or illustrated that for any political system that in order to survive that political system it must 
do its function basically measure two functions one is it must be able to allocate the values to the society very important point must be able the political system must be able to uh, must be able to allocate the values to the society or in the society second is that second is it must be able to get to get all the members of the society accept those values or accept those decisions so these are two important aspects two important functions of each and every political system should carry and for that for that what the political system system does is that it's basically taking decisions making policies making plans making actions or something like that that means that means uh, the use of values the use of resources it means simply simply uh, the, the function of political system relates to taking decisions taking taking decisions and issuing commands taken let's take an example suppose a government a government make a policy why a government make a policy obviously it has some issues there obviously there there has been some problems which needs to get solved for that for that policies are made and that making a policy or making 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 decision is something important function that a political system should do and in order to first the first part the second is making one policy only does not does not deliver or doesn't make make uh, make make sense that needs to be implemented that needs to be obeyed so so the system must ensure that whether the policies whether the decisions that were made policies that were made were implemented or not these two major functions were important as per david easton as per david easton for political system to survive the second part now now uh, now some more illustration illustration for that input and output analysis what david easton Easton talked about is that a political system any political system any political systems are influenced by two major uh, components so yes the first one is its input the second one is its output input if i illustrated earlier input side input generally means means something that we so something that we uh, apply in the system uh, hope you understand about the system system itself is a uh, in the system has multiple multiple uh, components and it it works in an integrated way so the how uh, political system political system works is basically there are several other components related to the political system and um, important point is that there are several systems not only political systems since uh, we are talking about political systems there are several other that may be economic system that may be cultural or that may be social other systems were there or so political system it has two major components as per david easton the first part the first option is input and the second is output basically uh, this is suppose this is the box let's see this is the box suppose this is the system and in this system there are input and output so this input has two other components that are one is demand next is support so what are demands for david eason demands are demands are the expressions of opinions 
the expressions of opinion that may be may be opinion that may be call to action or that may be that 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 may be request or to have something for developmental activities for policy changes or for policy formulation for policy implementation whatever it could be that 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 goes to the demand side demand and all these things happen this all these things happen in a political environment this all yes the whole sphere is the political environment and demands are demands are, demands are there from the political environment so in the, the demands is is mentioned is i have just mentioned as per david easton these are these are the uh, demands are the op opinions are the calls calls to change call to action call to policy which are essential which are which which sometimes uh, the uh, uh, people or uh, institution that are in authority have to do or sometimes this they should do or this should not do this is what about about the demand the demands may may include uh, the, uh, the in increase increase in wages or increase in uh, working hours hours sometimes or let's 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 make it more simple lots of people are are there without employment and people want to get employed and they they need they need job and for that they can demand for the demand for the employment opportunity lots of lots of places in in rural areas the the educational infrastructures are not so well equipped and people people in the society or the, the people who are the real estate holder there they can make a demand for the uh, educational infrastructure so these are these are the in uh, the, uh, the, these are the demands that people could make to the system and not only this one this there are several other options that may be uh, developmental activities that uh, security security concerns or public security 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 of property or many other aspects that people could, could make is a is demand so the system political system get support from the political environment this is the second aspect david asked that david eastern has pointed inside the input side of the political system so basically support itself support itself means the support to the political system is it just uh, mentioned there are demands and the, the political system that may be government that may be the authority made some decision decisions uh, in this uh, uh, decisions for the welfare of the country for the welfare of the people or for the issues that are emerged and it doesn't it is not necessary that the all the you know, policies that are brought that are made by the government that are made by the authority are accepted by the public but basically this input side consists of the support basically it means that people do have or the, the members of the society do support to those decisions made to those uh, to those uh, policies made uh, as, as mentioned earlier in order to survive any political uh, system it needs two functions and the first is the form formulation of policies making decisions taking or uh, issuing orders and second is that needs to be Im implemented that needs to be if that apply that needs to be obeyed for example uh, government government made law law that people are not allowed allowed to do some business it it means that people or member of the society may accept that or may not accept that is what the support is here got the government suppose government of nepal changed the fiscal year fiscal year time fiscal year that that, that has been changed from baisak to chaitra that public may support or not or just like um, the government of nepal changes the educational year educational year uh, is in line with or similar to that fiscal year it means the the related uh, member of the society needs need uh, they, they either support or not support so simply support section can have positive direct as well as indirect indirect uh, aspects so very important aspect is that no political system 
could last long without the support of the society. This is what most important part in democratic society. Right? In democratic political system, it is very essential, very essential that 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 the public support that may be by election that may be that may be uh, from the sub that, sorry. Uh, so the member of the society do support to the to the political system until and unless un, until and unless they favors the public and th there is correlation between the support support of the public and the action of the authority so this is the important part and <coughs> accepting decisions of the authority the, the uh, people in authority or the uh, people in position made decisions made laws or do regu regulate uh, or maintain maintain law and people or the member of the society accept that accepting such uh, decisions made by the political system is basically obeying them or implementing them or or following what following what the what the what uh, the instructions were made is the basic way of the support showing in this uh, system in this system is for David Eastern but important point is uh, it, it, it there is not such, such a situation that the, the decisions made by the authority were were support, were not not supported were not sometimes not supported just we can take some examples from recent Nepalese political sphere the the um, suppose the government government has made the ordinance ordinance against the, the acid attack it was praised by most of the people most of the member of the society but the ordinance ordinance that was brought that was brought little earlier about about the split of the parties parties that were that were that was uh, objected that way that was not supported and later the government with view that it means simply it doesn't it is not necessary that all the decisions that were made by the authority were supported so yes the so important another important aspect is that the support comes within the environment within the the frame of this political environment yeah we we, we, we should not uh, we should not get uh, confused that the support that may be that may be uh, that may be uh, received from uh, from outer 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 side it means from uh, foreign foreign support that this is not here this that is not related in this part of this support is already mentioned support can be both direct as well as indirect direct means simply simply people accept that people simply follow that that is simply uh, related to a direct correlation, direct relation, and sometimes people uh, the indirectly support is for the attitude, attitude like uh, sentiment, sentiment and attitudes were developed, developed in line with the actions that are made by the government, by the authority. That is the indirect way of support. So here in this point, in this point, uh, the support sometimes the uh, political system may face support stress sometimes sometimes political system may face support stress simply that that means people people do not support the the uh, people do not accept the laws that were made people do not accept the policies that were made and the actions that were that were that were made. So David Easton talked about support stress due to the failure of output. So every action, this is input, input goes 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 uh, in relation with the output. What are the outputs? Simply outputs are the decisions. Outputs are the decisions, policies as mentioned earlier. So these are the decisions. Th these are the policies policies made by the authority by the government so 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 this support stress emerged due to the due to the failure of the output why output is important that is sim simply it is important because every action the, the, the main orientation of the every action are related to the to the public welfare no political system, basically no political system in democratic uh, norms and democratic culture, culture aspire 
public loss with the public loss or public uh, public loss by by such inputs. So sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens, and in such case, support stress emerges. The next important point is that. Yes, conversion process is another aspect that is important in this uh, analysis, input-output analysis. Conversion process. Simply it means how inputs are converted into outputs. How inputs are converted into outputs. This is what is conversion process. And this conversion process generally, generally followed selection. Selection. Or that may be limitation. Limitation. Or, or sometimes uh, such inputs could be rearranged. Here, every input do not reach to the output. Every policies that were made do not do not uh, every every demands cannot reach to the level of output. So it it needs to pass the converse, conversion process. And suppose suppose uh, uh, there there were demands there were demands of uh, school building construction. And throughout the country, some 500 school building constructions were demanded. That means they were the demand collected from the political environment. But all the government may have limitations of resources. Government, the government may have uh, priorities for health infrastructure rather than education infrastructure. So, so the, due to various reasons, uh, all those demands could not be transferred to the outputs. For that so this is why conversion process is important conversion process goes and selection is important so selection among which one which demand could be selected or the limitation limitation just like the authority the people involved in authority they may they may limit limit the uh, limit the number of the number of uh, the construction the, the construction of the education education infrastructure that were demanded or rearrange the rearrange could be made as a conversion process so so this conversion process operates dynamically it keeps on going it keeps on going because uh, th th this conversion process do not take place um, do not take place uh, abruptly or do not take place with a short period of time it keep on going it takes time it takes uh, it takes period of time so so it, it it is dynamic in the sense and another important part is that the conversion process yes the conversion process also depends upon the capability of the political system how capable how capable the political system is how much capable to to extract the resources or let's say financial resources to to mobilize the resources to regulate the resources or or to regulate the uh, implement the activities or to take control control over the over individuals and good that is related to the capability of the political system here in this point i would like to relate some examples whenever we talk about the development activities the, 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 the development activities that were that were done in developed countries why developed countries can carry out development activities so smoothly but and why underdeveloped countries like like nepal uh, could not could not uh, finish finish projects could not finish uh, developmental activities with a, in a in long period of time so it's simply because developed countries do have a capable capable political system and 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 opposite to opposite in the developing countries we do have yeah we we need to accept that we, we do have political the capability you know capable there is a problem in cap capability of our political system you know this this can be seen uh, from time from time to time 
Now, it's already, I have already mentioned about the output. Output basically, outputs are the decisions made by the authorities. That, that may be policies, that may be regulations, or that may be actions, laws, or so on. So, so uh, the authority, authority, authoritative authoritative decisions are important for the are, are the important aspects of the uh, outputs on the one hand and and on the other the, those decisions affect the political environment the the actions decisions policies that were made by the uh, by the authorities well, that is important on the one hand and on the other they also affect again the political sphere political environment that's why that's why those outputs try to help the political system. The main objective of, of objective of the outputs is 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 already mentioned. Is I have already mentioned that political system need, needs to survive, and in order to survive, they must do action. They must function. So, so this is a, another important aspect. Is that there is feedback. Feedback. So, the feedback is another important component of this input-output analysis by David Easton. So, what is the feedback? Feedback is the process. Process of the communication, communication of information communication, communication to the input from the output. Generally, decisions of policies or actions or laws that were made by the authority, they do have, they do have, uh, they do have, they are intended to take actions and the actions it, it is not sure that those actions were positive or that they were welcome welcomed by the public sometimes some yes the, the, those actions were positive feedback feedback to the input in two ways one is generally positively feedback and the other is negative generally we we understand criticized criticism so the information that were essential to the authorities that were channeled through the feedback process feedback process to the input and and this feedback it is very important very important for for uh, revising or for for improving the political system without feedback without feedback the uh, the, the people in authority they they do not able they do, they, they do not able to understand the impact of the of the actions impact of the policies or the of the, the, the regular decisions so this feedback give them the idea that what is happening there whether the policies that were made are implementing or not whether the, the policies whether the actions that were made are are beneficial to the public or not what are the present state of affairs that this is very important for this is very important so so feedback feedback mechanism is very much important what is just just simply simply feedback is related to the to the information to the authority that what is happening whether that that is um, that is working properly or not otherwise in the absence of feedback those who are in position those who are in authority they have to work in dark or let's say in vacuum if there is no communication back to uh, back then uh, the, the people who are in policy making people who are in in, in authority have to work in vacuum and then there, there is always a gap in between the policies made and the problems facing by the public so i am as yes, i am talking about the feedback and this is very important feed, feedback component the component feedback is very much important important to the decision makers to the authorities simply because uh, for the for the survival of the political system for the success of any political system the actions the policies that were made needs to needs to carry the the positive results needs to get the positive feedback and in case of negative feedbacks Yes, it is for sure that uh, it is not it is not uh, the obvious that all the feedbacks are made positively. Sometimes negative feedbacks are also uh, are also presented towards the authority. It, it, we can we can just relate so, so several examples in American political system how Donald Trump get uh, get feedback get feedback from the public 
through the through the recent election is one of the example proper example that the the, the feedbacks were made if if the uh, if the proper feedback feedback was was taken by the authority he could have taken some other exams some other actions or some, some other uh, policies that could not harm in that could not harm to his uh, to, to his vote voting voting right so uh, the important part is feedback is important next part is that this is the cyclical process it keeps on going it keeps on going inputs demands are there from the uh, from the environment political environment support happens support happens within that environment as already mentioned this support neither this support nor this demand is taken outside this political environment and then the conversion process it keeps on going it this is simply simply input process output model so conversion process means the process that keeps on going that this is the dynamic process it takes time it takes time to process that and the output that the outputs are made uh, they are the decisions they are the uh, regulations that are that are made by the authorities and and the feedback this is important is mentioned earlier that uh, how, how how that outputs are working whether those outputs uh, are uh, are is intended or not so it gives idea to the policy maker it gave idea it sorry it gives idea to the policy maker to the authority and and it is for the feedback the course can be corrected the course can be corrected if the positive feedback is there the, the policy policies made are okay the actions made are are, are okay and it can be continued or if the uh, the feedback if the feedback is negative or the criticisms were made made then then it can be corrected this is what about the major aspect of political political system now some some positives some positives of this uh, input output analysis by David Easton simply it it offers the scientific analysis of the political process how how the process how the process works in political system it it it, it seems it seems so easy that there are inputs outputs and the, the feedback this is a cyclical but but the, at the time when when it was in 1960s when david david Easton was talking for the first time about this uh, at the application of system theory in political science it was scientific analysis of of the political process second is this is dynamic model dynamic in the sense though uh, this is dynamic in the sense it keeps on changing it keeps on keeps on going and uh, and we, we we do not need to need to worry that something in some process in some point it stops it keeps on going and and it gives it oper operationalize the system those those components that are discussed in the system they make the system functional second is that it is easy to explain the change of politics what what does what changes that are that are that are made or the changes in politics can be explained so easily by this by this approach there are demands there are supports there are there are conversion process the, the outputs the, the outputs that were made and 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 that is why the change is happening the, the, the development happened simply because of the proper demand and proper selection the deterioration of politics or the political the, the political parties political systems keep on changing simply because those demands were not proper supports were not properly made that's why political changes were happening so so easy to explain the changes in politics it uh, it is useful for the regular analysis of political affairs and it is equally equally as applicable in almost all po political ideologies here <clears throat> and most importantly most importantly sorry most importantly uh, this uh, input output analysis is important to to the study of instability of politics why there has been inst instability in politics simply because of how inputs were made how out outputs were made if inputs and outputs both were not in line with the public interest if the inputs and outputs were not in line with the public desire public demand and obviously that means the changes in political that may be changes in political system that is important 
Second, there are some uh, criticisms. Uh, criticisms generally are made from traditional perspective, and these are the traditional notion. Notion of criticism. Criticism is that these are very uh, traditional type of type of uh, illustration. Those inputs, they, they were there, demands were there, support were there, and keep it, it. It has been happening. So, what is what is new to this theory, to this approach? This, this is the criticism from traditionalist traditionalist and this is another is this is considered as uh, elite oriented theory simply because this is basically uh, uh, a little uh, a little bit narrow in its concept that it only talks about the political system and and present day um, affairs political affairs are not only limited are not only uh, are not only limited in a narrow frame of domestic political affairs. There are several other influencers or the, the actors in political system that they, uh, they, they, are, they are both uh, state actors as well as non-state actors who has uh, influence in the domestic political systems functioning. So, so this, is, uh, this is about, <coughs> about the negatives or the criticisms. Now I would like to conclude, conclude what I have made today. Basically, I have illustrated what the the part of the the part the part of the topic that I I was talking about. It, it was its systems theory and in particular its input output analysis by David Easton. And David Easton David Easton has used has used some uh, it's like like a box type of illustration box type of illustration which consists of three major major components. Two input components, one output components, and supported by feedback components. So, uh, inputs have two categorization. That's a demand and support. Demands means the opinion, the call for change, a call for action, or the actions that are requested requested to the authorities. Supports support is from the political environment support generally support generally is taken as input simply because it helps authority to do to take action to do to do uh, activities second is the conversion process it keeps on going it is a dynamic process and the outputs output are output are decisions of regulations or the legislations law, law making um, law making of, or or uh, 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 order giving order command or mobilizing mo mobilizing different uh, institutions that are the, within a, that are there within the political system so and then feedback feedback is important aspect which is which gives a feedback to the to the decision making bodies or decision making authorities so that the political system keep on functioning this is what about david easton has illustrated so the major major aspect of of uh, things that we need to understand is that input that is why that is why this is input output analysis input is are there outputs are there inputs are made to get the outputs and those outputs are intended to serve to the public to serve in the society if the outputs work well then the political system sustain then the political system is are praised if the outputs are not are, are not uh, properly in line with the desire of the public, in line with the uh, desire of the society, then the, the system malfunctions or the system do not function properly and the system may, may be changed. This is what about the, uh, the input-output analysis of David Easton. If you have questions or queries, feel free to ask me. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you.